Whilst exploring the open world of Red Dead Redemption 2, you can come across a grand total of 144 cigarette cards. You can come across the cigarette cards randomly whilst opening premium cigarette packs, but you can also find them in reliable locations. And so this video marks the beginning of a series of guide videos on where you can find them, and will cover the necessary lore bits and pieces along the way. Initially I was just going to do a massive ultimate cigarette card guide video that would have been stupidly long, However, breaking it down into 12 videos on each individual set allows me to be a bit more precise and provide timestamps for each individual card so that if you're looking for a specific one, you don't have to watch the entire massive video and worry about YouTube buffering over it, as it can get a bit temperamental while skipping through a long video, or the description being simply too long for me to be able to do that. So in this first video, we are going to be going over the famous Gunslinger's cigarette cards and where you can find them. Of course, since this is the first guide, I think I'll provide the context here and then lightly reference it in later videos to avoid wasting too much time. So to begin the side mission of sorts that revolves around these cigarette cards, we need to first head to Flatneck Station, where we will find a man chain smoking an unhealthy amount of cigarettes named Phineas T. Ramsbottom. Hmm. Yeah, do you smoke, sir? Sure, but <laughs> perhaps not as much as you. Oh, <laughs> no, no, don't worry about these. Actually, well, take some. Take a couple of packs. Take a few. Oh, thank you. What are all the cigarettes for? Are you heading on a long journey or something? <coughs> no, 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 nothing like that at all. I'm just interested in the cards. Okay. The cigarette cards. Oh, you got me? Yeah? Well, get them out. Let me take a look. Come on, come on. A little picture card? Yeah, I'll pay you a good price. Okay. Here. Ah, nothing I haven't got. The value is in completing the set. Sometimes I'll smoke up to 200 cigarettes in one day, just so I can keep opening the packs. I wish I could explain to you the pleasure and the pain I get out of collecting these babies. Sure. Well, it sounds, uh... Thrilling? Yeah, it is. Not to mention the vast amounts of life-reaffirming cigarettes I get to smoke. Oh... And the amount of money? <laughs> a veritable fortune, sir. Fortune? Oh, sure, sure. A complete set of any series is worth a fortune. Yeah, look at this. Gunslingers. Over here, circus freaks. Yes, yes, yes. Meow meows of the desert. So rare. I never knew. Sure. How much? Well, it depends on the rarity, sir. Oh, of course. Yeah. But you know, if you ever get a complete set, I can uh, take it off your hands. You'd pay me. A fair price. Now you send them to me right here. Phineas D. Rampart at your service. I gotta run. This is my train. Look me up, okay? Think about this deal. Only a complete set. That's where the value lies. So now we have a mission to complete every single cigarette card set so that Phineas T. Ramsbottom will pay us which he does after we send each individual set to him by post as we complete them, which is a fair deal. Now, unfortunately, only so many of these cards can be found in the areas accessible to Arthur Morgan reliably as you explore the open world. And so to complete this as Arthur Morgan, you will need to open your fair share of cigarette packs as well. However, the game does not like to duplicate cards once you've got them. So if you pick up one from a pack, that one will not appear in its reliable location and also, if you keep buying and discarding premium cigarette packs, you will eventually complete all of the sets in about 15 minutes. And now for those of you like me who do not find tedious exploits to be much fun, in this video I'm going to go over where you can find all of the famous Gunslinger cigarette cards. To begin with, we have the cigarette card of Frank Heck, which can be found in the Valentine Cemetery. Once in the cemetery, you will find the card placed on one of the stands of one of the headstones. Most interestingly, this is one of the headstones that does not have any markings on it. There is no name, so we do not know the identity of the deceased that lays here. Could this be Heck himself? Initially, Frank Heck was intended to appear as one of the subjects of The Noblest of Men and a Woman. He has a cut log screen and also a character model in the game files. It is understood that Frank Heck is a famous gunslinger, considering there are over 100 Penny Dreadfuls written about him, as we can come across a copy of True Tales of Frank Heck number 102. That can be found at Lake Don Julio, and it depicts Heck as frequently referring to himself in the third person. 
You can also find his name on Register Rock, followed by the number 75, indicating that he was in the Heartlands in 1875. In the Tumbleweed Saloon, the bartender will state that Frank Heck was gunned down inside that saloon. Whether or not that's actually the case is by the by, as we never encounter Frank Heck, leading us to believe that he probably is dead. Next up is the Otis Miller Boys card, which can be found southwest of Fort Wallace at Six Point Cabin. Outside the cabin you will find a blue wagon. On the back of this blue wagon is the Otis Miller Boys card. Otis Miller is based quite heavily on real western outlaw Jesse James. Both have the same folk song dedicated to them, with the Otis Miller version having slight variations to account for the differences in names, and both had a son named after them who was later acquitted for train robbery. They were also both shot and killed by members of their own gangs, and are similarly infamous as iconic outlaws of the Wild West, and if that's not enough for you, they also both had brothers named Frank. Otis Miller's name also appears on Register Rock marked 1879. Miller has at least 186 dime novels dedicated to him, and as one final thing, you can find his revolver in New Austin as gone over in a previous video. I would go over it again, but if I put a guide in the lore context of a guide, this video would get awfully convoluted and be longer than it needs to be, especially since I've already done that guide video, so hopefully the visual information is enough if you can't be bothered to go and watch that video, which I 100% understand. Next up is the cigarette card for the Jack Hall gang, which can be found at Shea Porter, which is located north of Valentine, just slightly northwest of Window Rock. Once here, head into the west cabin where you should be able to find the Jack Hall Gang cigarette card on one of the window sills. The Jack Hall Gang were infamous bank robbers who robbed banks all the way from California to New Hanover. In game, we can find some of their buried stolen gold, at least as part of one of the many treasure hunts. The in game song about them seems to indicate that they are mostly a reference to the James Younger Gang, as the song details many of the exploits of the James Younger Gang, attributing them to the Jack Hall Gang. Next, we have the Butcher Brothers, and their cigarette card can be fittingly found at Butcher Creek. If we head to the southeasternmost house in Butcher Creek, their card should be able to be found on a barrel on the front porch. What's known about the Butcher Brothers is that they were gunned down and killed by London Ricketts in 1896, and the circumstances of their deaths beyond that are unknown. They are mentioned in a couple of newspaper articles, however we don't get much more details about them. For the cigarette card of Flaco Hernandez, we need to head to Rhodes. Specifically, the cigarette card is located on the roof of Rhodes Bank. If you head around to the back of the bank, you will find a ladder which allows you to climb up on top of the roof. Once atop the roof, head back to the front of the bank, where just on the ledge you will find the card. Of course, Flaco Hernandez is one of the legendary gunslingers we meet in both Red Dead Online and Red Dead Redemption 2. He appears as one of the subjects in The Noblest of Men and a Woman, and is known as a ruthless outlaw who rode with a gang of ten men. Many of his raids were against Strawberry, Valentine and Annisburg, and by 18 1999 he's wanted in at least eight states, earning him the nickname the Terror of the Grizzlies, and by the time we encounter him in 1899 he appears to be associated with the Del Lobo gang. Slim Grant's cigarette card can be found at Fairvale Shanty in Amberino, which is a derelict structure located north of Oak Rees Run, just a slight distance northwest of the loft. Once here, the cigarette card can be located sat on a barrel just outside of the structure. Slim Grant is an infamous rival to Jim Boy Calloway, credited with killing Calloway's cousin in 1882. Sometime before the events of Red Dead Redemption 2, Slim Grant became the Territorial Marshal of New Hanover, which is where we find him in the Noblest of Men and a Woman side mission, and see the rivalry between these two legendary gunslingers put to bed. London Ricketts' cigarette card can be found in Armadillo. This card can be found around the back of the house that is opposite The Undertaker. Here you will see London Ricketts' cigarette card sat on a barrel. Ricketts was famous during the height of the old American West, with stories of his adventures and exploits pretty common commonplace according to John Marston referencing his childhood. As mentioned before, he's the slayer of the Butcher Brothers and was rumoured to have been involved in the Blackwater Massacre of 1899. In pursuit of a more quiet lifestyle, Ricketts moved to Chuparosa, Mexico in the early 20th century, which is where we meet him in the events of Red Dead Redemption. London Ricketts then passes away peacefully in 1914. 
Black Bell cigarette card can be located at the Riverboat Company docks in Blackwater. The card is sat atop a barrel looking out over the water. Mabel Elizabeth Coulter was an infamous member of the Coulter Tobin gang, though it's believed she is the sole surviving member, her actions leading her to become known as the infamous gunslinger Black Bell. It is believed that she married six times but never divorced any of her husbands, and can be encountered in the noblest of men and a woman side mission in which she is the only gunslinger who does not become hostile. However, after this side mission, she is not encountered again, still on the run from bounty hunters. The next cigarette card is that of Billy Midnight, which can be found on the eastern side of Tumbleweed atop a platform on the town's windmill. Billy Midnight's real name is Wilhelm Schnell, and he became famous more or less overnight after killing another famous gunslinger named Rabbit Matthews. With his celebrity status, Midnight did speaking tours and reenactments in St. Louis, San Francisco, and St. Denis, amongst other places, and due to the nature of his fame and what he did with it, received death threats and even assassination attempts as many believed that Midnight had killed Matthews in his sleep, which led to paranoia, resulting in his hostility towards the player when encountered in the noblest of men and a woman side mission, causing his demise. The Emmett Granger cigarette card can be found in two locations, one of them being Fort Wallace. This card can be found on a table under shelter on the western side of the fort, however there are a couple of problems that you will face with regards to acquiring it. From what I could see, Fort Wallace outside of missions that involve it is completely inaccessible. Furthermore, it is guarded by soldiers who are armed to the teeth, and so surely there's got to be an easier location from which you can acquire this card. Emmett Granger's card can also be found at the abandoned Canebrake Manor, in the Blue Water Marsh. This place is likely better known as the place where you encounter Black Bell, however inside this cabin on the table you will find the cigarette card for Emmett Granger. In 1882, Granger was reported to have been seen during a massacre in Beaver Brook. In 1886, he was rumoured to have been involved in the Laidlaw family disappearance, and in 1890, he was a suspect in the Chaparral killings. In 1894, he was also apparently a witness that led to the Fosse Gang arrest, receiving a federal pardon in 1895 from what is unknown, living out the rest of his life as a pig farmer, which is where we encounter him in 1899. Ironically, considering what happens to him, he chats a lot of shit, and prefers to use throwing knives in duels over guns, leading me to believe that there isn't actually that much truth behind the legends of this man. The cigarette card for Jim Boy Calloway himself can be located in the northwestern corner of the St. Denis Cemetery. It can be found inside the mausoleum with the tall spire. It can be found on the windowsill of a stained glass window at the back. At the height of his ability, Calloway was rumoured to be the fastest left-handed draw in the West with many a legend surrounding him and his exploits. Though considering he's the prime subject of the noblest men and a woman's side mission, we learn a lot about Jim Boy Calloway from the other gunslingers, discovering that most of what's believed to be known is simply fiction, with the game even going as far as to show us Theodore Levin misconstruing events that happened before our very eyes to fabricate stories glorifying him. In reality, according to Black Bell, Calloway typically ran from fights, that being said, we can learn the hard way that he is indeed a very skilled duelist, having the fastest drawing speed of any NPC in the game. So while most of it may be little more than a mere myth, there could be some truth to it. Finally, for Bart's love, we need to head to Hanging Dog Ranch located along the Little Creek River, west of Wallace Station in Big Valley, West Elizabeth. Now, this place is unfortunately crammed with outlaws, so you've got to shoot your way through to the main building, inside which, next to the couch, you should be able to find this cigarette card. All we know is Bart Love was a renowned gunslinger of the Old West, and no other details of his past are known. However, now we should have all of the famous gunslinger cigarette cards, which we can now send to Phineas T. Ramsbottom by heading to the nearest post office. Unless you have a favourite post office, which would be weird, but you can send it to the post office of your preference, I suppose. Once you've sent the mail, the game will prompt you to wait a couple of in-game days. Once you've done this, you can return to the post office to receive the rewards for your labour. For me, this was $50, a special snake oil, and vintage Civil War handcuffs. Kinky. Concluding today's video on the famous Gunslinger's cigarette card set. Of course, there are 11 other card sets to get, and I do plan on doing them all unless I'm hit by a train or something. Furthermore, I have a couple of other big Red Dead videos planned, focusing on the gangs that I'm yet to do, such as the Lemoyne Ravers. Ravers?
<laughs> I can't even edit that out, that was too good. The Lemoyne Raiders and the O'Driscolls, which I'm really excited to get working on. Hopefully this video has been above all else entertaining. Thank you all for watching, I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to go ahead and leave a like, subscribe, share the channel with your friends and all that wonderful stuff, that would be super fantastic. And with any luck I'll be seeing you all very soon with another video at some point, but until next time, take care and goodbye. Mm -hmm.